Hey, what's going on everybody? District here, and today we're going to be coaching a true gamer and going in depth as to why he's struggling inside of Apex Legends. So I'm not going to be able to track you. Well, to be fair, you wouldn't even want to be ADSing at this distance. In today's session, we're going to be diving into some movement techniques as well as some 1v1 tips inside of the brand new pit. And we've also got some great games to set of trios where we're going to be securing some wins and walking our teammate through how he should be taking fights and where he should be playing and why he should be making certain moves. If you've ever want to get better at Apex, check out the link in the description or any of the other videos on my channel for that matter and head on over to my website to book a coaching session with me. If you do play with a team, you can also book a duo coaching session for 20% off just so you know. And if you want to check out the full coaching session or any of my full coaching live streams, consider joining as a member of my channel. It's only $2 a month and you get a whole bunch of cool things unique to this channel like unique badges next to your name in the comment section as well as unique emotes that you can use in the live stream and in the comment section. Your support means the world to me and it helps me continue making these weekly guides as well as the daily shorts that you see on YouTube and TikTok every day. All right, now let's hop into this session. Yeah, we'll start off with a movement technique. I call it instant sliding, Game right? And then from there, we'll kind of lead into some more advanced stuff. So do you, do you know what instant sliding um, is to begin with? No. When you run with your gun in your hand, everyone knows that you run a little bit slower compared to right. when you holster your weapon. What most people don't realize, though, is that when you holster your weapon, it also affects other mechanics, such as sliding. So, for instance, if I want to slide and my gun's in my hand, I need to do a minimum of one, two, three steps. Anything shorter than that, like this, one, two, dead slide. One, two, dead slide. One, two, three, slide. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Now, when we holster our weapon, we don't actually have to take those extra steps. All we need to do is go one step, slide. Now, gotcha. the way that we're going to add on to this, and this gets a little bit difficult if you don't have um, paddles, right? But what we're going to do is instead of always holstering our gun, always sliding and taking out our gun, instead we're going to reverse it. We're actually going to take out our weapon, then step forward, slide, jump. I slide, jump, and then take out my gun. I can only get about one shot off before I hit the ground, right? Slide jump one step, only one shot before I hit the ground. Versus if I Y4 slide jump, well, I can get about 10 shots off before I hit the ground now. Y forward slide jump. So Y is actually before the forward. That's crazy to me. Yeah, so I'll kind of actually explain to you why it's like this. If we, I want you to holster your weapon and look at that crosshair on your screen. Now you're going to hit that, that Y button. You're going to hit swap. I want you to tell me how long it takes from the time you hit that button to the time it registers in game. Mm, half a second, maybe? About half a second, I mean, exactly. Yeah, right? pretty quick. So that means that you have half of a second to input any mechanic before the game starts treating your legend as if your gun is in your hand. So that's gotcha. why this mechanic works. So you're basically trying to swap and then implement a slide jump or implement just a slide the jump can come after um, before that crosshair changes. So we're starting off holstered, right? Okay. We're going to holster our gun. And now, from the holster position, we're going to get all the benefits of that instant slide. So now we're going to go Y forward slide jump. We're actually unholstering before we start moving. That way we're starting the animation that much sooner. So, just like that. Yeah, like that. Y forward slide jump. Alright, so what you're going to basically practice is using this mechanic to go from cover to cover. You're going to use it to lead into wall jumps. So if you're like right here, right, maybe you don't have enough room to have your gun and go one, two, three, right? If you're gonna get all fucked up. So instead from cover, Y4 slide jump, and now your gun is in your hand that entire time. I can shoot, wall jump, all within that time. Now you have that ability to like instantly hit slides from like basically no, you know, no cover, no space, right? Because once, you know, once you're running, if somebody shoots you, it stops your momentum. You're forced into a walk, which means that now you can't slide jump. Now you can't move around fast. Now you can't wall jump because you need kind of like slide jumps to initiate wall jumps for the most part, unless you do different variations, All right? So a lot of people get stuck in the open a lot of the time because they're always running with their gun in their hand. So let's get comfortable with wall jumps. Um, you can do the regular wall jump where you slide jump into the wall. Sweet. All right. How about keeping your body close to the wall so that you can have a little bit more control over where you're landing. Okay, so what we're going to want to do for this is as we're jumping off the wall, we're going to continue to push our movement stick in the direction that we actually want to land. And we're also going to turn our body into that direction also. So both of our sticks are guiding us to that direction. 
as you'll see, right, as I'm bouncing off the wall, my stick will keep pushing into that, into the wall, forwards, mm -hmm. and also into the right side, right, so 45 degree angle. So what it looks like off of a wall jump is like that. Gotcha. So very aggressively holding into the wall. Yeah. So let me ask you this, after the jump, you can still tap strafe? Yeah, so you can tap strafe off of jumps. So as I'm coming off of the wall, I can use a tap strafe. That counts as a jump. Like that. See, that would just be a game changer, dude. If I can hook a UE off of a wall, for example, I mean, that changes the yeah, amount can, of DPS you, I am going to be able to output. Really and take. Weird stuff like that, where you kind of, you know, go under something maybe and come back around with that tap strafe. All right, sweet. Um, so that's that. Um, are you comfortable with fatigue wall jumps? Practice them. Didn't uh, commit to it long enough to say that I could consciously do it. Okay. So there's two different kinds of fatigue wall jumps. There's the vertical, which launches you just straight up. And then there's the one that I was just doing, which will launch you away from the wall that you can use to kind of chain back and forth if you want also. What we're doing here is basically the same thing as a slide jump wall jump except we're replacing the slide jump with a jump, jump forward. So a lot of people do what you're doing where they spam jump until they get to the wall. So think of it like this. In basketball, you have two steps that you can take before you get fouled for a travel. Mm -hmm. In Apex, you got three steps you can take before you get your fatigue worn off. So for instance, I'm all the way back here, right? Jump, one, two, jump off, right? What you're doing is you're kind of jumping at the wall and then you're like jumping. that's a perfect analogy like i freaking get it now yeah <laughs> that's awesome okay there you go sweet yeah all now right. all day a Easy. lot of people what you were doing earlier right a lot of people struggle with doing it right up close because obviously if i'm right here i'm not running at the wall i'm like right next to it already so all i'm going to do from here is i'm going to jump close to the wall and then jump and kind of flick my stick forward so i mantle so the easiest way to practice this is press up against the wall and then jump and push forward and get comfortable with just f kind of flicking your stick forward and mantling. If you kind of have to like hold it, you might start climbing. So you want to kind of get comfortable with kind of flicking. It's kind of hard to explain. You did it right there. So that was perfect. You just want to get for get comfortable with as soon as you mantle, you're jumping off. One last thing. A lot of people think that you need to sprint to initiate a slide. You actually mm -hmm. just have to have a directional movement and then you can also jump to initiate a slide. So for example, if I'm right here, I can sidestep, jump, and slide into it. If I'm going backwards even, right? Backstep, jump, slide backwards. So a gotcha. lot of the time, yeah. you might be in a gunfight. You just sidestep, jump. This is really useful too, if you want to kind of like, if you're fighting and you can't put down your gun to holster into a slide jump, right? Mm -hmm. Into a wall jump, you can kind of just keep fighting and then slide jump towards that wall. I would have a limiting factor where I need a one times because I'm not going to be able to track you. When I aim down sight, let me just go grab a gun. Well, to be fair, we you wouldn't even want to be ADSing at this distance. This is way too close to be ADSing, especially with the 2x. So look, look at those crosshairs, right? Like your body pretty much fills up the entire crosshairs, right? Like right. if I wanted to hip fire you right now, right? Like you can easily one clip at this distance. Something that a lot of people don't realize is that your your aim or like your recoil, your spray doesn't actually even go to the edges of your crosshairs. It's just a rough estimate, right? So it actually goes up to about a third of your crosshairs. So it's actually a lot tighter than what people think it is. So a lot of the time people will ADS and they're up close and when there's no reason to be ADSing. Yeah, I need to I need to work on that. So I come from like Halo 2 days, you know what I mean? Like I was very, very competitive Halo 2, Call of Duty, all that, where ADS spray is, I think, more significant. I mean, you really would have to be on somebody to... Um... I, I never played Halo competitively, but I remember I was playing like when um, the, the newest Halo dropped, right? It, like if you run BR, okay, think of it like this, right? How accurate is the BR in Halo? It's dead on. It's dead on, right? Especially, like, even when you're hip-firing, like, it doesn't have that much bloom versus the, the AR, right? It's got crazy, it's got crazy bloom. It's got crazy, like, yeah. spread. So, think of, like, think of it like this. You're probably used to, like, the like the AR recoil, how it goes everywhere. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. in Apex, it's a lot like the BR. Gotcha. Okay, right? that so helps it, a it lot. Is, it is really tight in Apex. So, I mean, realistically, 
I mean, this distance right here is like this is even this is hip fire. Yeah. yeah, like I would toggle between hip fire and ADS at this distance, right? Like I'll even toggle it right now. Right, this is like with like a stock flatline. Right, like you know, stock flatline. Just got on, no warm up, almost one clipping right. you. Right, so it, it is super super accurate. Are we using any abilities, or is this 100% uh, just just, raw just fire? all raw fire movement? You do swing really wide off your cover a lot of the time. Not sometimes, but actually a lot of the time. Um, and this is causing you to take extra damage. Right, if you're able to back up to that next piece of cover behind you, and I want to come and push you, I have to push through the open to come and see you, right? Because gotcha. I can't see you behind cover, which means that you're actively forcing me to move through the open where you can quickly poke out and do damage. Level out that advantage that he has by forcing him to miss shots. So as we're fighting, you're going order, order, order. You're minimizing how much damage you're actually taking while maximizing how much you can put out, right? So again, your goal is to move forward, not sideways, forward into cover, right? And then off damage, I'm gonna quickly back up, create space, force you to keep pushing me. And off decent damage. Use movement gotcha. to cross an through vulnerable open areas. Let's go some games. And just gotta play for survival. It's not looking. even really about KP anymore. I'm in. So, yes and no at the same time. It kind of goes off of your skill level to some. Obviously, your skill level is gonna affect everything. Right? But it, it's more so about. Um, are you taking the proper precautions to stay alive? A lot of people are playing, yeah, after getting 10th place, but they're getting there because they're ratting, which isn't really even playing, as opposed to you're rotating around the map, the you catch a team, but you catch a team at the wrong moment, right? They get you in the back, they get you in the side, Ooh, right? Maybe the fight doesn't me. keep, like, maybe Can the fight doesn't work out for you. Right? Like, maybe you start off winning, they flip the switch, They now they're winning, you're losing, right. they're about to win, right, right. right? But a lot of people don't back yeah. off. They Take don't the give themselves the chance to try wow. again in the future. Awesome. Right? So people, because they don't know how to do that, they just resort to ratting. Dropping in, hang right? on. But you can go around, take fights all the time, and if it's not working, just leave. Right? right. Practice playing at a distance. If the fight's not working, leave. A lot of people fight head on, and then they don't have that option because they're too close. So what we're going to do- oh, I got my load already, that's crazy. What we're going to do is we're going to practice that. We're going to practice taking fights all game, not ratting, not really rotating, just constantly fighting, fighting, fighting. And then practicing commandment, we're not winning anymore, practice backing up, resetting, get out of that shitty situation. Alright, I'm looking for Prowler and Wingman attachments. We're inside. They're just hanging out for no reason. What the fuck? Do you have an evac? Yeah. Right, so they're actually moving over, over here. There. We're gonna posture up. As we see them, we're gonna try to take a fight from a distance where we can put in consistent damage. So right now I'm gonna arc. I'm gonna force him to the left oh, side, okay? Or force him to the oh, he the back to the so they're, not, they're not looking. We're gonna Let's rotate go in a direction oh, where they can't easily see us. Right now I'm swinging right, they can't easily see right because they backed away from it. And then we can start walking up. Incoming care package. Reloading. Nice. I downed an enemy. Reloading. Repairing. One second, we got this. Whole squad's down. We made the right choices. Reloading. Right, so right there in that moment, you probably felt like you couldn't leave that fight, right? Because he was like right on top of you. Imagine this. Imagine you're taking a fight right here, and you jump towards the wall, and then fatigue jump away from him. Right? So you're fighting. Jump away yeah, from Yeah, I just... Him. Honestly, and I don't even have to get finished there. It's really... I've done the damage, it's a 1v3, and I don't yep. need to go down here for the sake of what if there's another team. Right here? What a 
Everything's got red. Crazy. So let's make sure we're looking that direction, right? You heard where those shots came from. Make sure you're being active and you're looking at what's happening. Make sure you're playing those corners as best as you can. I nice good buff. on blood. I think that's all I find coming back here. Yep. So we did hurt that lifeline. Nice. I'm trying to get a supporting angle, do some damage, and then we can push Shock off team. damage. Shock Still aggressive. So our goal right now is to get enough damage so that we can come in. Right? So again, right, we're doing those little tactics like jiggle peeking in and out of cover, staying close to that corner, so that when we get damage, we can quickly go back in and avoid being stuck there. I'm going to use portal so that we can start walking up. Maybe you can alt Listen, to their high here. ground if they're playing here still, which I don't think they are. Okay, they're all underneath us. This one's lit. Enemy down. Both on me right here. Enemy Down another. This one hurts. Nice. Last member's down. One squad. Now, I don't know if you know this, but Prowler is like literally broken this season. It's actually my favorite gun. I took R99 because Level optics I was here. thinking that Close you would range. be uh, hyper aggressive and I feel like R99, R99 with here. just clear shots are, I don't know, I feel like you can outpace somebody if you land all your shots with an R99 over a... 100%. It's just, it's, it also comes down to a damage output. Growler just does significantly more damage. One burst, you're hitting 75 to the chest, right? And then you can quickly go back into cover. Two, like two yeah. bursts, or th sorry, three bursts for one clipping red armor. And then you have an extra burst left on a naked problem. Versus an R9, you have to hit literally every single bullet. So it kind of comes down to like, yeah, you can definitely do more damage if you're hitting your shots, right? But the Prowler gives you a little bit of wiggle room and it still rips people in half. Okay, they're obviously not shooting us, so they're engaging a team. Goal right now, posture up towards the audio, but kind of incoming. swing into the audio rather than go straight to the audio. Yeah. Prefer Close. to type, type this from height. Yeah. I am taking fire, friends. On the bridge right now? What the Larry fuck? is getting yeah. I mean, we're leaving him. We're not going to go across the fucking map to go into the problem. Yeah. Heads up. We got an enemy. So right now we're at posturing up. Firing. So I got that break, right? You want to make sure that you're posturing up with that. What are you doing? Reload. Enemy taken out. Solid kill. Reloading. I got fried. Reloading. Swap them. That's reinforcing my Evo shield. Need to recharge my shields. They're on bridge right now. Oh, no. Another squad's attacking. Focus. Nice. Last one. Some player cover. And we take him out. That's what I like to see. That team was fighting somebody when we pulled up, right? Guardians right. Died. Which means that there is 100% another team there after we finish that fight. As soon as we got that kill, I armor swap so that I'm healthy right away. I don't heal, right? I armor swap so that I'm instantly healthy. And then I immediately look at that next team. I don't loot because I know I have enough, you know, loot to heal or to fight or to do whatever, right? I don't want that team to push up. So I'm immediately posturing to hold or to do damage on that team. If they're pushing up, they're moving through the open, right? Gotcha. If and you're referring not, to the bat that I popped, I should have just armor swapped You should have just armor swapped, right? Because all the shields right. were purple. So worst case scenario, you don't get red right away, right? Right. You get it okay. a little bit later. Yeah, totally. But and you know, that's funny you say that because that's something I know I've got to get better at. Yeah. Um, and I just, I don't know, dude. Care package over here. <laughs> I think I bat 100% and then shit like that goes down. It's like, God. Yeah. Right, we got a uh, team rezzing right here.
It is a singular. Oh wow, he just charged right. Try not to. Oh, it's very, very valuable. Back off. Team up the hill. So let's focus right now on getting into this high ground. One minute. Rings. Oh, team right here. Broken enemy shield. Busted a buster shield. Nice. Oh, good enough, dude. Remember, there is another team, so right now you're focusing on healing, not so much trying to... Reloading. Oh, you're That's thirsty, all good. Nice. Good armor swap. Any sniper on there? Yes, thank you. Alright, now we're looking at this team. So I have a knock. I'm just gonna thirst this guy quick. 30 seconds left. Yeah, we're Enemy taking gold out. bag. Gold helmet Busted over here. Busted. I got the gold nice. bag. Um, yeah, I grabbed the helmet. So try not to ult. Unless you're really stuck in a spot, then use that ult to lock onto your teammate. Right, but in that situation, you know how we were stuck in the open going up that hill? Mm -hmm. That ult would have been super clutch, being able to put yourself into high close. ground or to reposition yourself or get closer to your teammate. So let's posture on this team if we can get oh, damage. Nice, yeah, so I was set to um, ult to height where he was shooting you from. I was slightly out of range. So they're actually crashing right now. And they're in round four, so we want to get in front of them and hold this team. Right, we don't want this team to be able to come out. So you want to start moving this way, my man. On me? Yeah, so listen to my comps, right? And move away. You're going to hold, right? Not to be fighting in that storm. Nice. Alt to me if you can. Shielding from the ring. The mobile shield's taking a turn. I hear somebody beside me. Hold me too. Good all. Throw my grenade out. Put a grenade, grenade on it. So I'm always positioning myself to like to catch people as they're moving up as opposed to moving up into people so in that fight right there you see how you kept pushing into survey camp you, are the you worked your way champions. deeper and deeper and deeper into a fight and then somebody mm -hmm. got around and behind you versus right. me i worked my way away from survey camp because those players are forced to come towards us so i'm just going to catch them as they work their way up about that that was actually what i would consider a slower game and then we just stayed in the business after uh our initial contact exactly right so at you know at the end of the day a lot of people think if you want to drop 3ks 4ks high damage chains you have to land hot you have to pop off it's not the case whatsoever right all of my 4ks and 5ks it's not because i'm popping off off drop sometimes it happens i drop a crazy game right but most of the time my fours fives and sometimes even my six and sevens all come from what we did we land off to the side, grab loot, and we just pick people off one by one as we start running around the map. Fighting right here. So they're, fight they're actually fighting underneath, so we're going to focus right here. This way. I know the layout is a little weird. So they're on all different angles right now. Got one now. Nice. Still on this kid down here. I need an adult. Nice. Oh, they were fighting right here. So as we're walking up, let's look. Let's like, go this take way. Yeah, see him upside right here. Yeah, yeah, so let's take angles that will allow us to actually hit good, consistent shots. Now, once we've got those angles, then we're gonna go for damage, and off damage, we're pushing up, right? So they're playing in the doorway right now. Broken enemy Reloading. Anyone call for a protector? Finishing my shield. 
Oh, what the shit, dude? I just took a fucking portal. I opened into a portal. I've never done that before. Killed an enemy. Reloading. Reloading. I've never beat one of these kids. Well, over here somewhere. Top four. Shit on him. So now he can't peek from there. Dude, I've never done that. I literally ulted on top of that portal and it just... And it got you stuck in it. <laughs> yeah, it like glitched for a second. It pushed me back and forth. It was interesting. So in this situation, it's going to be very hard to actually take this gunfight, right? Because they're all the way up here. Yeah. So we need to think to ourselves, how can we make this team look away so that we can go through the open and take that fight and kill them? In this situation, poking at a distance, this isn't helping us. What happens if you break? Right. What happens if you get a break right now? Right? Not even that. It's the last team. There's right? two squads left. But what happens if you get a break right now? You can't do anything about it. What happens if you get a knock? You right. can't do anything about it. So we need to think to ourselves, what can we do? Oh. Yeah, no, and I, I don't think there was this last team, but what I'm saying is, it's like in the event that there's others, you know, yeah. poking and staying in fights too damn long is probably the root cause of most people taking an L. Can we deal on that one? Got a protector for you. All right, now this is the last, literally the last guy. So I'm gonna, we're literally just gonna push together and. 63 on him. No, I fucking fell. Well, teammate wins that one.